Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we have the meta snapshot for patch 14.8b. This is going to be the week 2 update. We are in essentially what's called a 4 cost meta. Everyone's going for 4 costs. You've been seeing a lot of 3 star 4 costs I imagine as well. But let's just get right into all the comps and go over how to play them including what champions are involved, items, augments, things like that. So let's start off at the top. Kane Lee Sin is still going to be the best comp so far. It just plays all the best 4 cost units right now. Ash Porcelain going to be right behind them. Very solid comp if you need like a range AD carry. It depends what items you kind of slammed early on. Then we're going to move on into Fast Nighting and using 5 costs. You typically play this if you had a very good early game or if you have a ton of economy and you're able to roll down a lot of gold at level 9. And then after that we have Kaisa Bruiser's very respectable option as well and then Dryad Reroll. Dryad Reroll still works pretty decently despite the nerfs that they received. Next up we have is Built Different, very augment dependent obviously. Shen and Senna still very powerful. Lux reroll, two solid reroll options still at two costs. Aphelios is okay. A little bit worse because a lot more three costs are still in the pool so it's kind of harder to hit your Aphelios three, Thresh three. Janna Zyra reroll, if you get too healthy or enter the dragon, this is very powerful. Ink Shadow Kaisa, if you have a plus one Ink Shadow, it's incredibly powerful, especially if you have good ink shadow items, and then Ethereal Blade Shen, solid, Storyweaver Bard, solid, Arcanist Warden, solid, Lilia Invoker. I actually like this comp a ton. For some reason, I like Lilia a lot this set, despite her being underplayed a bit. Yone reroll. You'd rather be playing Kane Lee Sin, but if you get it for free, you get it for free. Syndra Faded, solid. Again, you prefer Aphelios, but if you cannot get Aphelios, then you have to go Syndra. It also depends on your items because they use completely different items, but if you're going down Faded, you have to kind of decide between the two. Cogwall reroll got nerfed a bunch. It's still okay, but it's really the only viable one cost reroll so far. Zoe Soraka Diana reroll, very similar to the Janna Zyra reroll, and then Umbral Yone. I think they're going to be buffing Umbral a bunch in the following patch, so both this comp and the Elune Invoker reroll probably going to see more play in the future. Duelist reroll. After the Titan's Resolve nerf, much, 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 much weaker. And again, same problem with the Aphelios build. Fewer people are going for 3 cost units, so it's more difficult to 3 star your entire team. Kabuka Lucky Claws. Still an okay option if you start the game off with a lot of Kabukos, but it's not like a free top 4 by any means. 4 cost Ghostly got dropped down to the B tier. Kha'Zix reroll, Storyweaver reroll, and Mythic Bard. Probably don't want to be playing those that much. 4 cost Ghostly is kind of struggling a bit because... All their 4 cost units kind of fit in better comps right now. So let's start off with the best of the best, Lee Sin, Kane. You want to be rocking some heavenly units, and then put Edge and Knight on Lee Sin and Kane, plus some random bruiser damage items, preferably one healing as well. If you can't get an Edge and Knight, something like a Quicksilver could kind of do, or just getting like an extra damage or healing item onto them. But survivability is the name of the game, and you want to buff up these two units as much as you can, so you do that through utility such as Morgana throwing Morello on everyone, making sure that they don't heal back up. You could get stuff like support items, you could get more heavenly crests, or you could get a bunch of combat augments that buff up your entire team, mainly so that it could affect Kane and Lee Sin the most. Cap off your late game with some legendaries through Wukong and Rakan. This gives both more heavenly and more dragon lords. And you really should be good to go from there. If you want more information on this comp or any of the other comps we're going to be covering today, head on over to the website bunnymuffins.lol meta where we update this meta snapshot every single week. Next comp up we have is Ash Porcelain. Extremely popular comp right now. And my favorite part about this comp is that every unit in the comp does something. So in the front row, we have a bunch of tanks. All these tanks are solid tanks. And we have five four cost units in the comp, at least in this version. We have Orn, we have Nautilus, we have Annie, we have Lilia, we have Ash. So whenever you roll at level 8, you're able to hit something to stabilize your board, depending on what items you have. If you have a bunch of AP items, you can throw them on Lilia. If you have a bunch of AD and attack speed, throw it on Ash. If you have a bunch of tank items, Orn, Nautilus, or Annie can hold any of them. And then potentially what you can do is go level 9, or stay level 8 and go for 3 star 4 costs, which have been kind of dominating the entire meta. I actually find that a lot of people are hitting 3 star 4 costs even within the same game, so sometimes you get 3rd when you have like a 3 star Nautilus or something like that. I've seen it happen before. This build looks a bit different than the one we had last week. This one's playing more so around the invokers, and this is a bit of the more optimized Ash comp than we've seen from the previous weeks. The mana really helps everyone cast a bunch more, all the invokers are very solid units on their own. And you get a ton of free synergies because you get to play Kog'Maw, which is a 3 trait unit. 
which buffs up a lot of random units on your team. For items, Ash definitely wants a Rage Blade, Lilia likes some sort of mana item, blue buff or Spear of Shojin, but then after that it's kind of free game. You can build a lot of different things. Any AP on Lilia, any ADAS on Ash, any tank items in the front line, and always put your items on whoever's two starred. Obviously you don't get, like we have how many items here? We have 16 items listed here. You're not going to get 16 items in your game, so focus your items on whoever you're able to two star. So in the front line, if you have a two star Nautilus, throw the items on Nautilus. If you have a two star Orn, put the items on Orn. If you have a two star Annie, put the items on Annie. But again, this comp's really good because it plays a ton of four cost units. You just roll at level eight and you're bound to hit at least a couple of them that you're looking for. Next one up we have is Fast Nighting and 5 cost. Again, you want to only play this if you have a very good early game or if you have a bunch of Econ Augments that you're able to get to level 9. You want to roll at least, like, for me, I prefer, like, at least 40 gold, if not even 50 gold at level 9, while still having, like, maybe 40 health. I know the situation sounds really difficult to do because it doesn't happen in a lot of your games where you get to level 9 with 40 health and 50 gold, but that's why this is a rare comp to kind of go for. Yeah, you might get away if you do it with 30 gold or even with like 15 health, but I'd say if you want to do it comfortably, having 40 plus gold and 40 health, generally a good idea. Obviously, it's a bit playstyle dependent. If you're a bit greedier, you could go for fast nighting a bit more often than I do, and if you're a bit more conservative, you could do it a bit less and roll harder a bit on level 8. It depends if you want to go for like the 1st or 8th playstyle or like a top 4 playstyle, because sometimes you go level 9, you roll down, you don't hit anything even though you do have a ton of gold, and then sometimes you just hit stuff for free without even realizing it. Fast nighting is a bit difficult though, because you have to build a bunch of random flexible items that work in the early game that still kind of fit on every legendary. When you're playing legendaries, you don't tailor items to them, for example, Wukong is incredibly powerful with blue buff, but you don't just build a blue buff in the early game thinking you're going to go Wukong because it's difficult enough to find one copy of him, let alone three. So maybe you built a Spear of Shojin instead because it's a bit more flexible. It fits on Hui, Azir, and Shojin still works pretty decently on Wukong because it makes him take two autos to cast his ability. Obviously, tank items are a bit easier. Any tank items work on any tank. But stuff like Red Buff or Morello is really powerful on both Hue and Aurelia depending on who you hit. So that's another good flexible item that I kind of like to build in this comp too. But all in all, just like any other comp in TFT, you have to play around what you hit and Fast 9 is a great example of that. Next one up we have is Trick Shop Bruiser. One of my favorite comps just because I like how Kaisa works. If you do get Ink Shadow, definitely use one of the Ink Shadow items on Kaisa or one of your main tanks depending on what you get. Always data check and you can do that by going to teamfight.lol, going over to items and then clicking the Ink Shadow on the right side here. Uh, this way you're able to see which Ink Shadow items are the best, which ones are worth going for. And especially when you're playing like the actual Ink Shadow build, you can make decisions like, should I even go for 5 or 7 Ink Shadow, depending on what item you get at that tier. Right now, they're honestly all generally pretty balanced, which I'm kind of surprised about. Definitely do prefer Toxin and Protection still, but as you can see here in Master Plus, almost all of them pretty much are around the same. Like 3.94, 4.11, is there a difference? Yes, but it's not that big. But it does depend on what units you run. For example, Vitality and Force, I definitely prefer that on stuff like Udyr. And if you don't have an Udyr, I generally don't like these two items. So in the early game, I like focusing more on Toxin, Protection, Bombardment, and Fear because at 3 Ink Shadow, you have much more users for them. All the damage items can go on Kai'Sa, and then the tank item of Protection works great on a main tank. But Force and Vitality, I don't think there are many great users for them apart from Udyr. Data checking can be a little tricky, but that's why you go to YouTube channels like mine, or on the website because we explain these things more in depth, and if you tried to play the other tattoos without Udyr, it probably won't go so well that often. But let's move on into the next comp, that's going to be the Dryad reroll. This one's just a 2 cost reroll. Kindred, Gnar, same thing as before. You want like bruiser items on Gnar, and then you want AP items on Kindred plus a blue buff, and then everyone else, they kind of matter, but not really. You want to get to four Dryad. If you ever get a lot of spatulas or Dryad emblems, definitely go for six Dryad. It's completely broken, completely bonkers, not too much else to say there. You want to follow a two cost reroll leveling pattern, and in case you want to know all the leveling patterns, head on over to the top at buddymuffins.lol, go to leveling, and then there should be a two cost reroll guide there. But let's get back into Dryad reroll. Essentially, you wanna like stabilize at level six first, get two star Gnar, two star Kindred, then Econ back up, roll down to 50 every turn, and then ideally hit the Gnar three and the Kindred three. Next one up we have is Built Different. 
You need the build different augment to make this work. But this comp's really good because everyone's going level 8 right now. Everyone's going for 4 costs, so you're able to kind of conserve your health a bit more than before, which makes this augment really powerful. Unlike other 4 cost comps where they have to go for specific units, in build different you could use any 4 cost. You could use Kai'Sa, you could use Ash, you could use Morgana, you could use Syndra, and they all kind of use very similar items. Ash and Kai'Sa use very similar items, Morgana and Syndra can kind of use the same things as well. And then for the tanks you could just use whatever. Another thing to keep in mind with this comp is that you could run duplicate copies of your units, so again, you could play like 2 Annies or 2 Ashes, and then potentially 3 star them later on, which of course, helps you win the game a lot easier. So, very nice augment. I would probably auto-take this in a lot of cases. On stage 2, when you get offered this, you prefer having a bunch of random 2-star units to really make the most of it. Next comp up we have is the Shenna build. 2-cost reroll comp. Again, when one of the rerolls are S-tier, we notice this pattern in a lot of different patches. When, like, 3-cost comps are in the S-tier, every other 3-cost reroll is in, like, the high A-tier. But now we have a 2-cost comp, which is in the S-tier, and then a bunch of 2 cost rerolls are in the high A tier, such as Shen and Lux. The reason why, again, is because of how the unit pools work. Taking 2 cost units out of the pool makes all the other 2 costs easier to hit, and that's why this comp is still able to compete. It's also very strong still, and you can use pretty much any item you want on Senna, and most tank items work on Shen, though you do prefer the Gargoyle Stone Plate because of the way his ability works. Obviously, you want to get the good tattoos on them, protection and toxin, but the main requirement is having a lot of Senna's and Shen's. Because you really need to get them 3 star, because the comp kind of falls off really hard if you don't, and then just throw in all the ghostly units and you're good to go from there. Lux reroll, very similar leveling pattern to the Gnar reroll and the Senna reroll, except this time you're going for Lux. And then you level up, go for a Mumu 3 star after you hit the Lux 3 star, but you do it on level 7 instead of level 6, so it's a bit different from the comps from before. Getting a lot of porcelain spats is amazing for this comp, and also getting arcanist spats. Pretty much whenever you get any augment that adds plus 1 to a trait, it makes this comp much 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 better. Also, you definitely want to have some sort of anti-heal item such as Static Shiv or a Ionic Spark. If not, this comp is going to have a lot of trouble killing some of the tanks. Next one up we have is Aphelios reroll. Just a solid 3 cost reroll around Thresh and Aphelios. You want some sort of attack speed items on Aphelios like Red Buff or Rage Blade, sometimes even both. And then Thresh just likes Stone Plate plus any generic tank item. Do a 3 cost reroll pattern for this where you go to level 7, stabilize a bit, and then Econ back up and then roll down for it later. You could even stabilize at level 6 on stage 3 too, it depends on how your game's going, what health you're at, and what augments you took prior to that stage. Next one up we have is Janna Zyra reroll. Only do this if you have too healthy or enter the dragon. I mean, you could do it otherwise, but it's not going to be as strong. So unless you start off the game with like six Janas, only do this if you have too healthy or enter the dragon. One common mistake I see when players go this comp is that they go for this when they have like perfect Janna items. They have like some Janas, but not like too many. And then they don't have the augments and then they play it. They win a couple rounds in the mid game, but then later on they fall off really, really hard and they're like, hey, this isn't fair, I have Janna 3, I have Diana 3, why am I not winning any games? Well, it's because you don't have the augments. There are some other versions of this comp that play a little more around Zyra. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but they do kind of work because Zyra did get a couple buffs in the recent patch. But just throw a bunch of Dragon Lords into this comp, and you pretty much call it a day from there. Next one up we have is the Ink Shadow Kaisa build. Only, 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 only play this if you get Ink Shadow Emblem, either from Atoma Traits, the Wandering Sentinel portal or from like one of your augments. Sevening Shadow is incredibly powerful because you get a ton of tattoos and a bunch of damage and damage reduction buffs that Ink Shadow gives and all the units are more or less pretty solid. Like Senna's pretty good, Kaisa's pretty good, Udyr's obviously great, even Volibear's not bad and Aatrox and Jax are good trait bots, meaning that they could be used just for the Ink Shadow trait and they also have complementary traits in the mid game. So. In the mid game, if you need random tanks, any of the Wardens can complement Jax, any of the Bruisers can complement Aatrox, and of course you have the ghostly units as well. One really good unit in the mid game for this comp is going to be Illawi. Illawi is both a solid unit in her own right, and she also gives you ghostly and Warden. One little trick I have for this comp is for the Ink Shadow Emblem, you want to put it on anyone you don't care about, which is a little tricky in this comp because the only non-Ink Shadow units we have is Orn and Zaya. Orn's going to be the main tank, so you want to throw all the items on him. So, oftentimes the Ink Shadow Emblem goes on your 1-star Zaya. If you have a 2-star Zaya, you might want to move the Emblem somewhere else to get a 3-item Zaya. 
but this tip more so applies in the mid game when you're running random units. And the reason why you don't want the emblem on one of your stronger units is because you mainly play Ink Shadow for the items, not so much for the buff that it gives. A lot of people don't even know that Ink Shadow even gives a buff. That's how low priority it is. Uh, but next comp up we have is Ethereal Blade Shen. Only do this with Ethereal Blades, obviously. And then build like Rage Blades on Shen and like a bunch of damage items on Shen. Uh, honestly, like Triple Rage Blade might be the best build and then make some on your main tank. Sometimes you just get Yorick 3 while you're going for Shen because they're both two cost units. But it really could be any of the Behemoths. Then you play six Behemoth plus some random stuff. I like dropping in an extra Morgana here. Morgana is a great support unit, also gives you ghostly. Nothing's really too complicated about this comp here. Next one up we have is Story Weaver Bard. Rage Blades, name of the game here as well. Then you pretty much want to play this exact comp because you get so many random traits from this. I like having the red Story Weaver or the green Story Weaver. The shred that Kale gives works on both armor and magic resistance, which is really good for Bard because he deals both types of damage. Tom Kench main tank, of course you need mythic. You also get Altruist, Arcanist, like a lot of random stuff here, which is really nice from this build. For Emblems, getting Heavenly is pretty decent, but not that great. And Mythic also works if you get Huey, because then you can go for 5 Mythic, and also play Huey, which is just like a generic good unit. Drop a Morello on Huey, and then also you're able to print out some of your extra copies of Tom Kench and Bard to really hasten the 3 star potential of both of these units. But pretty simple comp to play, just a 3 cost reroll at level 7. Next comp up we have is Arcanist Warden. This is one of those like niche four cost comp builds where you build around Nautilus, Syndra, and Amumu. Also Alawi to some extent depending on who you're hitting, but mainly the main carry is going to be Syndra and then Lissandra is very solid in the late game too. But this is more so a backup comp. Maybe you could use this to fast nine. Maybe you could use this to pivot into other comps. I wouldn't consider this one of like your main comps for this patch. Uh, next one up we have is Lilia Invoker. It's an okay comp, but because the Ash build uses a lot of Lilias, you might as well go the Ash comp instead of this, but this is a good backup option if you're hitting a lot of the Mythics. Maybe you got a Hui early on. You could kind of go into this build rather than the Ash build. Next one up we have is going to be Heavenly Yone. The nerfs hit hard and also a lot of your units are being taken by the Kane Lee Sin builds because they take all the Heavenlies, they take Kane, and sometimes they even take Yone. The nerfs to Titans Resolve also hit hard too, but it's still an okay comp if you're able to get Yone 3 star for free. So remember last patch where you could play this comp and play around a 2 star Yone with like triple combat augments? Well in this patch, you could play around the econ augments now such as team building and heroic grab bag, because you're able to 3 star Yone a lot more often than you were before because no one goes for it. So that's like one of the main differences between Yone in this patch versus previous patches, which is something to keep in mind for the future. Next one up we have is Syndra Faded. This one's just like another one of those Syndra comps. You can play this one or the Arcanist comp. I like using this to go into other builds or if I have plus one Faded, it's much 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 stronger. I would not play this as my final build without like a Faded Emblem. Maybe you even want two of them because this Faded Emblem is really really powerful on a lot of your random tanks. Obviously a lot of synergies get stronger the more units you play of them but it works like doubly true for Faded because both the bonus goes up from your Faded units, but you also buff more units when you play more Faded units. So sometimes what I like to do if I don't have anything else to play, I like playing like a second Thresh because it just gets all the bonuses of the Faded units. That alone can be sometimes better than adding in like a Behemoth if you don't have Orn yet. Because if you have 5 or 7 Faded, they get like the 300% Faded bonus from two different units, which is absolutely incredible. But what I like most about this comp is that you could flex into a bunch of different legendary units in the late game, drop the faded item onto them, and they get super super strong too. So you get a bunch of lifesteal from set which works really well on anyone in the late game, and Syndra gives a percent damage buff so you're able to use those two units to kind of snowball the game. Overall solid comp, not my first pick, just because there are better things to kind of go for right now. Kog'Maw reroll, if you get too much candy in the early game, that's kind of the only time I would consider playing this unless I have a lot of Cho'Gaths and Kog'Maw's naturally and I have items for Kog'Maw. You really want to prioritize the Nasher's Tooth and the blue buff. Without those, I'd say the comp is kind of unplayable. So you want at least two out of your three starting items to be some sort of component for blue buff and Nasher's and maybe like four or five Kog'Maw's and like two or three Cho'Gaths to start off the game. If you have more than that, great. If you have less than that, uh, you better have like too much candy to make this work. But just do one cost reroll for this build. 
focus on Cho'Gath and Kog'Maw, and you're going to be good to go from there. Next one up, we have a Zoe, Soraka, Diana reroll. This is very similar to the Janna reroll that we saw earlier, but not as reliant on the Augments. More so, it's like a backup plan. Sometimes the game gives you a lot of Zoe's, and there aren't too many comps that make her work, so this is one of them. And Zoe carry actually does work. I wouldn't like hard force Zoe carry, but in certain spots it can be pretty decent. Then paired up with Diana reroll. Diana's an okay tank I'd say. She's not like the best tank because she doesn't have like the most tank traits. She actually doesn't have any tank traits at all. She's a sage and a dragon lord. But if you get her three star she's actually kind of decent. Just not that great. Um, next comp up we have is Umbral, Yone, and Elune. Again I'm thinking they're buffing Umbral in the future patches. Just because Umbral hasn't really been played all this set. But I think when it does, this comp could be powerful, so look out for this comp in the future. But if you want to play some sort of Yone build and you don't hit any of the Heavenly units, this is something to consider too, or if you get a bunch of Aloons along with the Yones. Next one up we have is Aloon Invoker reroll. Same thing as before, but this time you're going to be focused more on the Invokers rather than the Umbrals. But you really only play this if you get a lot of Aloons for free. Uh, next build up we have is Duelist reroll. I'd kind of avoid this right now. It got nerfed a ton, like... It was a cool comp before, but when your main unit's main item gets, like, completely gimped, it's not really that useful anymore, right? So, until they either change Volibear, change Titan's Resolve, or change something about Duelists, I'd probably put this comp in the backseat for now. Next one up we have is Kabuko Lucky Paws. Only go for this if you get the Lucky Paws augment at the beginning of the game. And I only like playing this if I already have a 2-star Kabuko before I even take the augment. That way when I take it, I have 6 of them, and then I get to 3 star Kabuko really easily. I get to 6 bruisers, and then add some random DPS unit. The best one's going to be like Kai'Sa plus Sivir, because they give you Trick Shot and Story Weaver. And Kai'Sa's good in the meta right now, but in different metas, you might want to use a different carry in the back line. Now onto the B tiers, not too important. 4 cost Ghostly got dropped down here. Uh, Kha'Zix rerolled, you don't really want to be playing these comps. Mythic Bard, the other Bard comps just better. Story Weaver reroll. This one is might be the only playable one out of the B tiers. Just because if you get this comp completely for free in the early game, you can still make it work. Kale actually is a solid carry, and maybe you get some plus one Story Weavers to hit the Story Weaver thresholds a little bit easier. But that's going to be all the comps for this week. Just to summarize, it's a four cost meta. Kane, Lee Sin, Ash Porcelain. That's going to be like your bread and butter for most of this patch. Uh, Kaisa also fits there. Maybe like... 70% of your games are going to be these three comps, and then 30% is going to be everything else. So mainly just focus on the S tiers for this week. That's going to be my biggest piece of advice, but that's going to be it for me today. Let me know what comps are your favorite in this patch. Let me know what you're looking forward to being changed in future patches. And you could do that all in the comments down below or in the Discord channel. Links in the description below as well. But that's going to be it for me today. Hope to see you all next time.